Okay, so we're now going to create our standard curve and use Excel to do that. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the following steps. We're going to add the raw data from that we obtained for our standard solutions into columns in Excel. Then we're going to first calculate the concentration of nickel 2 plus from the, from the data. Then we're going to create a plot called a scatter plot, which is an XY plot where the X axis will be concentration, the Y axis will be absorbance. Then we're going to spruce it up, fix some things, make it better. And then we're going to add a trend line, which is also called the least squared line, which is the line that best goes through those points and obtain its, um, its uh, formula. And that's going to allow us then at the end, that formula will allow us to find the concentration of nickel from the absorbance measurements for our unknowns. So let's go over to Excel and do this. So what we have here is we have um, the data already added. So we have our blank and our five solutions, A through E, uh, for our standards. And the mass of nickel to nitrate hexahydrate um, in grams. And we have our absorbance measurements. Those are the things we've measured already. So first of all, the blank has no nickel in it. So its moles of nickel are zero and its concentration of nickel is zero. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to calculate the moles of nickel present in our solution that we made containing 14.55 grams. So the moles are going to equal the number of grams divided by the molar mass. So I'm going to click on the cell for the number of grams and divide by the molar mass, which is 290.82, which we read off the bottle, but we could easily have calculated it. Okay, so that's around 0 0.05 moles. Now, one thing nice in Excel is instead of doing that calculation for all of these samples, you can just take the little box on the bottom right there and have the, have the big X turn into a little X and drag that down, and it copies that calculation. And when it calculates that calculation, it basically says, take the number to my left, and that's in, in now cell B4, and divide it by 290.82. So these are then our concentrations in moles per liter. And Excel is, is doing it with too many significant figures, but we'll leave that be for now. Now we're going to find the concentration. And so all of these solutions were made up using uh, volumetric flasks of 250 milliliters. So that's 0.25 liters. So we're now going to take the moles. So we have to say equals the moles, which is this cell here, cell C3, and divide by 0 0.25. And so that gives us our concentrations. And so again, you take the little uh, box on the bottom right, drag that down. Okay, and so now we have our, our uh, values we need for our plot. The x-axis, we have these values here. Those are the concentrations. And the y-axis, we have these values here. Those are the absorbance units. Okay, now the plot we're going to make is called a uh, scatter plot and X -ray, X, uh, an xy plot. And so what we're going to do first, we're going to select our data. So we can select the x data just by dragging there. And then I have a, a Windows uh, computer here, but it works on a Mac too. But I'm going to hold Control down and push on that, on the first of the absorbance units. And I'm going to hold the Shift key down and click on the bottom one. So we've chosen those two columns of data. Now we go to Insert, and we're going to choose the scatter plot, which is the one that looks like an X and Y axis with dots on it. Because that's what we want to make. And we're not going to make one with lines on it, we're just going to do a raw scatter plot. Okay, so that's our plot. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty linear. And so that's pretty nice that we uh, came up with that. I'm going to make it bigger because that's the kind of star of the show. And now what we're going to do is we're going to, we have to uh, spruce this up now. And so the first most important thing is to worry about the axes. Class, one of the most embarrassing things you can do as a scientist is to show another scientist your data that has a plot that has axes without labels on it. Always label your axes. It's important. Okay, and so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to first go to a quick layout and choose a layout that's got places for axis labels and a title and the like. So the first thing is it's got this series one thing over here that's useless, so we're just going to delete that. Second thing is we're going to change our title to something useful, and so I'm going to call it standard curve for nickel 2 plus. Now because we're chemists, the 2 plus has to be superscripted, and so I'm going to highlight the 2 plus, go home, click on the little expander thing for font, and click superscript. Okay, so that's that. So we now have a title for that. 
The next thing we do is we want to put in our axis titles. So our axis, our x-axis is going to be concentration of nickel 2 plus, so it would be nickel 2 plus in square brackets. And then you have to put the units in, so I'm put comma moles per liter. You can use a capital M for, mol for molarity, that's okay. Um, and I'm going to highlight the 2 plus and again make it a superscript. Okay. Now the problem is that's pretty small. Uh, that, that's a very that's a, an important thing. So I'm going to take that there. I'm just going to make it say 14 font to make it bigger. Okay, the y-axis is absorbance, and absorbance is its own unit. So absorbance is not any other unit, and so I'll call that. And I'll also make that 14 font. Oop, that's. Okay, so now we are ready to add our uh, trend line and find out the equation for the straight line through these points. So the way, uh, one way to do this is if you go and hover over a point and right click, you can say add trend line. And then uh, when you do, you say display equation on chart. That's our y equals mx plus b equation. And also uh, go ahead and display the r squared value. The r squared value tells you how well those points fit on that line. And one is perfect. And 0.9996 that we have is really very good. So the other thing about this is these are pretty small. And this is, that, this is actually the values we're looking for. So I'm going to highlight them and go again go home and make that large. Because that's actually... The whole point of doing this is to get that equation. Okay, so we're done with our um, making our standard plot, and this is it. And the the equation we have is y, which is absorbance, equals 5.0517x. X is the concentration of nickel, minus a small correction factor because the line didn't quite hit zero. But that's looking really good. So now we're going to use that equation to calculate the concentration of um, all of the nickel plus and all of our unknown samples.